نستعين به ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له لا شريك له ولا مثل له ولا مثيل له ولا ند له ولا ضد له ونشهد أن أسوتنا وقدوتنا وسراجنا المنير محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه صلوات الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن استن بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فقد قال الباري جل جلاله في كتابه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والفجر وليال عشر والشفع والوتر وقال الله جل جلاله ويذكر اسم الله في أيام معلومات على ما رزقهم من بهيمة الأنعام فكلوا منها وأطعموا البائس الفقير وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما من عمل أزكى عند الله عز وجل ولا أعظم أجر من خير يعمله في عشر الأضحى وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما من أيام العمل الصالح فيها أحب إلى الله من هذه الأيام يعني الأيام العشر وبعد Respected brothers and respected sisters, scholars and teachers and elders Alhamdulillah Allah Azza wa Jal has allowed for each and every single one of us to want to to have the willingness to, to willingly choose to come to Jumu'ah today, Alhamdulillah. Allah allowed for us to wake up healthy with the ability, with Iman, with the desire, with the facility also to come to the house of Allah and to be present for the faridah of Salatul Jumu'ah. These are the greatest of Allah's ni'am and I remind you every Jumu'ah that we should be thankful because with thankfulness Allah multiplies and increases and we want Allah to increase and multiply our hidayah and all of the blessings that He has granted us in our lives. Uh, Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. We are talking today about, inshallah, the topic of the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. First 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are the days that we are in now. The first day of the month of Dhul Hijjah was yesterday. And Dhul Hijjah is the month that is the last month of the Islamic Hijri calendar. The, as you know, the, 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 month, the year starts with Muharram and then Safar and it carries on. And then we come to Ramadan and then we have Shawwal and we have Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hijjah uh, and we have Muharram. So these three months are sacred months. The Ashurul Hurum, uh, Dhul Qa'da, Qi'da and, and Dhul Hijjah and Muharram, they come together. And there is one more sacred month which is Rajab or the Rajab of Mudar which comes before Ramadan. These are sanctified and sacred months of Allah Azza wa Jal that Allah establishes and mentions to us in the Quran that Allah says, إِنَّ عِدَّةَ شُهُورِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ إِثْنَا عَشَرَ شَهَرًا فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ مِنْهَا أَرْبَعَةٌ حُومٍ Dhul Hijjah is the last of those months or last of the, the last month of the Hijri year. It is extremely virtuous. And its benefits are mentioned in the Quran. And its benefits are mentioned in the Sunnah. And Allah says in the Quran that He has, these are the days of Dhul Hijjah where they mention and remember the name of Allah by saying Tahleel and Takbir, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, 
Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamd. These are the first 10 days. We think that Tahleel and Takbir are only on Eid day and after. But in fact, these are the Ma'lumat, the known days even before Eid. The Ibadah, one of the Ibadah is to do Tahleel and Takbir. Inshallah, we'll speak about that in just a moment. So first of all, its virtue is indicated towards by the fact that Allah takes Qasam and Oath by it. When Allah takes Qasam and Oath by it, it means it's very important. Allah indicates his importance and Allah takes an oath by the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah by saying, Wal Fajr, wa layalin ashr. Even though it says layalin ashr, the Mufassirun are of the opinion from the Salaf and from the Khalaf that these are referring to the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And Al Imam Al Hafiz ibn Kathir says in his tafsir that this is the correct translation that these are the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah that Allah is taking an oath by. Allah says these are the days where you should mention the names of Allah and that these are the days we prepare for the sacrificing of our property and of our animal and for hajj and etc. And that also indicates the importance and the virtue of these days. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has testified to, has taught us that these are the most virtuous days. He says, فَضْلُ أَيَّامِ الدُّنْيَا أَيَّامُ الْعَشْرُ That the best days of the world, the best days of the worldly life, the best days of the year are the days of the 10th of Dhul Hijjah. In it also is the day of Arafah. And Arafah is the day of Al-Hajj Al-Akbar, is the day where the main part of Hajj exists, Al-Hajj Arafah, as the Hadith says. And so because it contains within it the Yawm Al-Arafah and the days preceding it, the beginning of the Hajj, it also indicates to us how valuable, how preferred, how virtuous it is in the sight of Allah. It is also the Yawm Al-Nahar, the day of sacrificing, the Eid Al-Adha, the big Eid like we say. And that also indicates that it's virtuous and that it contains this day within the first 10. And so that's another sign, another, another, another you know, example of how virtuous these first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are. We see that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is encouraging us to do good actions excessively and more and more to multiply our ibadah. That shows that there's something special in these 10 days. The, and we, also sees, we also see that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is encouraging us to do tahleel and takbir and to do glorify Allah and to say tasbih in these 10 days. That also indicates that there must be something special in these 10 days. And so the examples and the evidences of its speciality are numerous and are too many and there's no doubt about it. Al-Hafiz ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, the commentator of Fath al-Bari, who authored Fath al-Bari, he says the reason why they are the most important days of the year is because in these 10 days, all of the main primary ibadat, the pillars of Islam, come together. In Ramadan, you have fasting, you have zakat, and you have other salat and Quran, but you do not have hajj. But in Ayyam Dhul Hijjah, you have hajj. And you have the encouragement of fasting, and you have the encouragement of giving of udhiya, of 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 sadaqa generally, of and we have the encouragement of praying more to do more ibadah. That includes your fara'id to do them perfectly, to do your rawatib and your sunan as much as possible, to do tilawatul Quran. And so we find all of the big ibadat come together, combine in these ten days of the Hijjah, and that's why its virtue is so high and so significant. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that there are no actions which are more pure or more beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal or greater than the actions that are performed in the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah SubhanAllah. And another hadith says that there are no days in which actions are more beloved to Allah than those that are performed in the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And all of these indicate that the virtue of them and so any ibadah that you do, whether it's fasting, whether it's your salah, any ibadah that you do, if you do it for the sake of Allah with sincerity, Allah Azza wa Jal will multiply its reward. So what are some of the actions that we do in these 10 days? What can we do? First, of course, at the top of them is the hajj. Those who are going to hajj, they're the most beloved, most uh, fortunate. Because the reward of an accepted hajj mabrur is nothing short of Jannah itself, Allahu Akbar. And the hajj mabrur and the accepted hajj is that hajj which is according to the sunnah and the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu which has no mixing of showing off or argumentation or fighting or fisk and fujur and rafath and all of these things that distort and damage your hajj. The second preferred ibadah in these days is fasting. Fasting, if possible for you, all of the nine days. Of course, you can't fast the tenth because that's, that's the eighth day. 
But even if you do not, then at least the, the ninth day, the Yawmul Arafa, because that is about which the day about which the Prophet Muhammad said that I expect from Allah and I count from Allah that Allah will, because of the fasting of Yawmul Arafa, expiate the sin of two years. Allahu Akbar. The third preferred ibadah is Salah. Uh, the general principle, we've said it before, I said it, I say it, I'll say it again, that the most rewarding actions are the most important ones. What Allah made fard, that has the most reward. What Allah made wajib, Allah gives most reward. Then is the sunnah mu'akkada, then is the sunnah, then is the mustahab and nafal and etc. That's how it works. And so when it comes to your salah and you want to reap maximum benefit for your salah, then try to perfect your fara'il first. Try to make sure it's done on time. Try to make sure it's done in jama'ah. These are the sunan and the conditions of the salah. Uh, try to ensure that your wajibat are done perfectly within your salah. Try to ensure that the wajib of witir, according to the ulama who say it's wajib, is done perfectly and, and, and with proper following of the rules and full sincerity and full focus. Try to ensure that your sunan mu'akkada and ghair mu'akkada are performed as much as possible. Try to perform your nawafil. Try to do qiyam al-layl. That's how you work on your salah in the first 10 days of Dhul-Hijjah. Also is takbir and tahmeed and tahleel, which is Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd, to do these takbirat even before Eid Day comes. Sayyidina Ibn Umar, Abdullah Ibn Umar and Abu Hurair radiallahu anhumah, they used to go out into the marketplaces even before Eid Day and they used to say takbirat loudly and others used to join them. And Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab used to say takbirat loudly from his tent in Mina and others would be able to hear him and they would follow with him to say the takbirat. And so takbirat even before Eid is preferred, it's one of the ibadat and you should say it in a slightly loud voice without causing inconvenience or disturbance to others. Also is sadaqah. Sadaqah includes general charity, but also the udhiyah. The udhiyah is according to, uh, uh, the, according to the Hanafi school of law and according to other schools also is wajib. Is wajib upon the person who has owned the nisab. And the nisab is some 250 pounds or so. And if you do own that property and you are balig, and you are aqil, mentally aware, you're not unconscious, you're not uh, you know, unaware mentally, and you have this property of or the wealth of 250 pounds or more, then it is wajib upon each and every single person. It is wajib upon each and every single person. The ahadith which indicate towards you that you should give one on behalf of a family, this is where there is a need. This is where there is an inability. But if you can afford to give, then each and every single baligh, aqil person who owns the position of the nisab should give a Udhiya in their name, uh, go to a sheep or seven persons in a cow or a camel. And this should be arranged for before the day of Eid and the slaughter should be done on Eid day, on Eid day after the Eid Salah. If you can't catch on Eid day after Eid Salah, then 11th is also Jaiz and 12th is also Jaiz. But we try to go for the best, which is the 10th day. When you buy an animal for Udhiyah, try to make sure it's of high quality, it's of good standard. Don't go for the cheapest, try to go for the most expensive. The more you give, the more Allah will give to you and that's what's expected. It's called sacrifice. That you sacrifice your greed and you sacrifice your want and your wealth so that the others the, the poor and the needy can benefit and of course you know the situation of bangladesh and other countries there are in deep need and excessive need so you can give your udhiyah in other countries and other parts of the world may allah give us all tawfiq and understanding Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, shakirin wa nusalli wa nusallim ala nabiyyil kareem Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. The udhiya is done for the adult, for the balig. If there are children in your family, you do not have to give udhiya on their behalf. But if you want to, it is mustahab and it's a good form of charity. There is no bets and there is no problem in it. From the ibadat that we can also multiply in, in these days of Dhul Hijjah is tilawa of the Quran, is seeking of knowledge, is reciting of istighfar, is to be obedient towards our parents, is to maintain and continue with good relationship with your family and next of kin, is to spread salam and peace, is to feed food, is to make peace and mediate between people in their problems and resolve their issues for them, is to command good and to forbid 
evil is to protect your lisan and your body from, from haram, from sins, is to do good towards your neighbors, is to be uh, uh, hospitable and kind towards your guests, is to spend in the path of Allah, it's to remove harm from the way of people, it is to also to spend upon your wife and your children and on your family, on, on your family is to look after the yatim, is to do visitation of those who are unwell, is to fulfill people's needs, is to send salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu it is to not harm others, it is also to be kind towards those who you oversee and you manage, it is also uh, uh, to, to maintain good ties of relationship and friendship with your friends, and it's also to make dua for your brothers, and there are so many more examples of good actions in these 10 days, you can inshallah think of them, but whatever action you do, Allah will multiply its reward and it is most beloved to Allah in these days than other days. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunna minal khasirin. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta al-sami'ul alim. Wa tub alayna ya maulana innaka anta al-tawabu al-rahim. Allahumma ayyid al-islam wa al-muslimin. Wansur ikhwana al-mustadafina fi mashariq al-ardi wa magharibiha. Wansurhum fi al-yamani wa fi al-shami wa fi kashmir. Wa fi filistin wa fi al-iraq wa fi bangladesh ya rabbal alameen. Wansur ikhwana al-mustadafina المصابين بالسيول في بنغلاديش يا رب العالمين اللهم اللهم انصرهم نصرا مؤزرا يا رب العالمين اللهم يا الله اللهم قرب لهم الفرج يا رب العالمين وأصلح أحوالهم يا رب العالمين وصل اللهم وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقم الصلاة